hooked up, we got the safety chains in. We just put a little length through the slot we cut in the receiver. If you want to do something different, we'll help you with that. But once again, we're beta testing. So safety chains are in, wiring harness is in, gooseneck adapter, which we are revising, but these will be made to fit also. Okay, I weigh 200 pounds. There's about 60 pounds of tongue weight on there. I'm gonna jump on that and see what happens. I bet you the business guys are going to say I'm, I'm exerting about 500 plus pounds of force on that thing. Look at the front end of that slingshot sway. You know, it's just like a fifth wheel in a pickup truck. Well, well balanced weight load. I am impressed. Let's take her down the road. Yeah. system install video. When you receive your Wicked Hitch system, you sh it should come packaged like this. Of course, there's bubble wrap and all that around it. We're trying to keep it under 50 bucks for shipping, so bear with us. You've got a shipping plate. It's got all the hardware mounted in it, including the two U-bolts up front. So what you want to do is take everything apart and, of course, save it. If you throw it away, you'll be taking a trip to the hardware store. So I'll take this off. I'll edit the video. Save some time, but basically it comes right apart. Okay, so I've got the unit disassembled from the shipping package. Remember, don't throw any of the hardware away. You're going to use it. Well, I'll accept these pieces right here. That can go. You can donate that back to your local high school shop class. And that one you can donate back to your local high school class because those are just under that piece of OSB. Save everything else. Organize it. Be organized. Makes assembly go a lot easier. Okay, that goes bye bye. Donate that to your local shop class. You can make some birdhouses out of it. They're mouse traps, mouse trap racers. Pull out the receiver unit. You won't need that for a while. Okay, we're ready to go uh, install this baby. Okay, if my daughter Maggie forgets to pack this in with the unit, I'm sorry, she'll send you another one. It's just a little PVC wear clip that clips on steel subframe right there and it's labeled that's the back front's labeled front put that on there that'll void your warranty if you don't uh -huh. okay the parts you got the seat belt retractors this is where we place a grade 10 bolt in right there so we've got two of them steel subframe you bolts go here and the two uh, grand ten bolts go here. Everything else is free floating. Okay. This is the aluminum subframe. Corbin has issues if people overload their saddlebags, so we build our system to fix that for them. Okay, this is the key for you guys to cycle springs in Florida. You want to save money and time, time is money. Put this U-bolt in first one that goes over the fuel pump cap, because it'll hold it up. So set it in place. Maybe it won't save you time and money. Sometimes you gotta squeeze it a little bit. There we go. Set it right there. Set 
slide it inside. And get that U bolt started. I'm going to try to. I've only done this about 100 times. There we go. He's put one of those washers and that's on. Hold that in place. I'll put on both of them. Now I got the two bolts that go in the seatbelt retractor holes. Get those started. Do not cross thread them like a rookie. My father did that and we had to retap everything. Not fun. If you need to, you can free uh, you can spread those, but they flex enough, you should be able to get them in the hole. with two people, but I'm doing this by myself. I'm man enough for the job. I've got those in. They are not cross-threaded. Now I'm going to line the rear end. I'm going to try to center it on the slot. Oops. Helps if you have the right side socket on the impact driver. Quite centered, but I'm gonna get the U bolt started next. Put the second U bolt in, it's a little tricky. Tight clearance, you gotta have some finger dexterity, they tell me, which I don't have. I'm gonna put the second half of the clamp in. Did you see that? We didn't have to do stop motion. Put that in. That is what you call finger dexterity and carpal tunnel and arthritis all in one. Okay, okay. I want to get this centered on the backpack here. So I got to loosen these two bolts. That will happen. Tighten the U bolts. I'm not going tight, I'm just going to cut. Okay, cut. Yeah, got everything where I want. I found my sockets. I'm going to snug these bolts down. We're going to torque them down to whatever the manufacturer specs are. I don't know what that is quite yet. 30 foot pounds maybe. Okay, that part's installed. Everything's in place. We'll snug up here. Okay, the receiver unit goes in next. That's for an inch and a quarter uh, hitch. Remember, we've cut the slot. We'll show you how to do that later. So it slides up from underneath, get it centered, take your half inch bolts. Here's one. Come up from the top. Okay. Is it going? Yeah. Okay. So hopefully she got those two. Flat washer, lock washer. We're gonna to torque those down. You could stop filming. Okay, I got my act together. And we're 
tightening that last half inch bolt. Lock this receiver in place. Okay, so here's my inch and a quarter hitch. Two inch ball. I actually had to drill this hole. I don't know what the heck's going on with that, but you might have to drill it also. Hopefully you know a good shop teacher in your town. Okay, ball is in. Here's the cool thing about this. Let's say we don't use that and we put a tab in there to support the, the rear aluminum subframe because Corbin, you overload your Corbin saddlebags and they're sagging. This is adjustable. So I'm going to push it down. Maybe. Oops, I gotta loosen that one and push it down. So we're gonna push it down. Maybe you're too high. Maybe your rear end's a little too high. See that dropping down? That's why we got this truss rod in there. Just amazing. An amazing invention. There you go. We dropped your pants. Okay, let's say you got a saggy rear end. You want to raise it. That's, that's the problem most of us have at our age. We'll loosen this one. Back it up. And I'm going to give ourselves a little uh, twist lift by doing this. And she's coming right up, right where you want her. Don't let your wife see this. <laughs> All right, lock it in place. Lock that one in place. And whatever, your wing, your Corbin fleet liners, whatever you got back there, your cargo rack, you can adjust that. Okay, lock everything in place, we're good to go. Alright, honestly though, you do have to torque all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts down. If you don't torque them, you're gonna avoid the warranty and, and risk something bad happening. Right. So I torqued that one to about 18 foot pounds. 15. Okay, we'll go 15. I don't know what the engineer's going to say. At least 10. Okay. Between 10 and 18, I would say. This is a grade 10 bolt here, so that one's at 30. Right there, 3 0 on the torque rim. Three zero, you got that, Maggie? 30. 30 foot pounds. Okay. Okay. I'm torquing this down to 50 on that half inch bolt. So 50 on those, but again, the engineer's probably gonna change that. There you go. Systems installed. You got your wiring harness either from Cycle Springs, who I highly recommend, or you could get it from Slingshot Mods. Either one. This was actually from Slingshot Mods. So that includes that install video. It's quite a sweet looking unit actually. You take the, the hitch out and you don't even know it's there. In fact, let me do that. While I'm here. License plate actually covers that. So. Nothing obtrusive, clean rear end. Plus you can take something with you now if you want to.